Welcome to the 9 to 5 Dropout Show, where you learn from leading experts how to quit your job and successfully start your own business. With your host, author, owner of Mind, Body and Spirit Entrepreneur and creator of the 9 to 5 Dropout Academy, Rachel Thompson. Welcome to the 9 to 5 Dropout Show, your weekly inspiration to quit the 9 to 5 grind and finally pursue your passion. So our very special guest today is Kellen Kaltzman, and he is the owner of Send It Rising Internet Marketing, where he manages a team of over 20 internet marketing professionals. He also has a book, Everybody's Doing It, Advertising Redefined, that was actually a number one bestseller. So he has articles also featured on the Las Vegas Business Press and also the Nevada Business Magazine. And he's really here today to talk to us about all different types of marketing whenever you are starting your business. So thank you very much for joining us, Kellen, and welcome. Hey, Rachel. How's life? Pretty good. Pretty good. So the first question I always ask all my guests is, how did you become a nine-to-five drop out and how did you get to where you are now? Well, Rachel, if I understand correctly, you used to be a clinical counselor at a school. I did. Uh, and my background um, is in education as well. Um, both of uh, the folks that raised me were teachers. And so growing up, that was always kind of the past, um, was teaching. And I ended up getting a master's degree in education from the University of Minnesota. I was the youngest person in the class. I was 23 years old and right into teaching. Now, the master's degree doesn't mean anything at all. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so year one, I was developing the curriculum. They said, oh, this kid can, you know, develop the entire curriculum and then teach these courses. Um, and then the second year, I was literally teaching Spanish one, two, three, four, and five at the St. Paul uh, Conservatory for Performing Artists. And I just got absolutely beat up, totally beat up. Um, it was uh, like the kids, certain uh, classes absolutely loved me and certain classes were just an absolute disaster uh, because I was learning. Mm -hmm. And so starting out in education, um, what I found was I really, 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 really love the idea of building something um, that generates passive income. Um, and I want to work harder and get paid more for it. That's just me. So I started writing on these two websites back in the day. One was called Bright Hub. The other one was called Associated Content through Yahoo. And the basic premise was you write an article, and then based on the number of views you get, you receive X number of dollars. So 1,000 views was approximately 2 bucks. And each article I wrote, on average, received about 1,000 views. So that means one article equals $2 per month. Easy math tells us that I just need to write, what, 2,000 articles to make 4,000 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. Piece of cake. So I wrote five, six, seven, eight articles every two to three days. And then in the summer, I would do like five articles um, a day. And I had a goal of getting a million views online, ended up moving down to Las Vegas. Um, and there was a job that was, wait for it. Nine dollars an hour. Wow. I had a six hundred dollar a month student loan and a master's degree, and I took the nine dollar an hour job because it moved me into blogging full time. And so I had started as a teacher, kind of moonlighting and every spare moment writing, and I was writing lesson plans. So I was writing what I knew, Spanish and ESL lesson plans. Anyway, long story short, um, years later, I had an opportunity to uh, found my own internet marketing company, um, and it's going really, really well. Awesome. I love that story. And I like how there's some similarities between your story and my story, both kind of starting off in the same place. And I like how you mentioned that you had your master's degree, but you took a $9 job because you knew that it was going to get you where you needed to be. I had a similar experience where I knew that I needed um, some management skills because I you know, from my master's, worked in the school, then I went more in corporate and I never managed anybody. So I um, took a job managing a very small coffee shop and it was kind of like, oh, I have my master's degree and I'm working for not very much like you did, but I knew I was gaining a skill and, you know, doing some other things like that along the way. 
So I think that experience is definitely important for listeners to hear. Sometimes you have to put your ego aside and do what you know is best for your future. It's going to help you move forward. Yeah, I absolutely love it. And I remember sitting there for $9 an hour, loving it. It was Mm -hmm. weird. It was so strange. And mind you, I didn't have kids at the time. So I understand that based on where you are um, in that whole uh, world of being a family person, um, there can be ludicrous amounts of stress based on the amount of money you're bringing in. So I understand that it changes. And and for the listeners out there, you're going to find yourself in just a wide variety of different um, places. But if you don't have kids, take the risk. You know, if you do have kids, I totally understand. I mean, there, there's a floor of money that you have to make. Uh, fortunately, um, I was able to do this prior to having kids. Um, and it, it, what you said, Rachel, about the ego is so, 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 so true. Um, and that actually uh, is a good segue into the, what, something I want to talk about, um, which is a Taoist uh, principle um, called Wu Wei, which... For the longest time, when I read um, this book called the Tao Te Ching, it just seems like poetry. So there are lines that, and I'm paraphrasing, are like, in doing nothing, everything is accomplished. And it sounds nice. It's like, okay, I get it um, but from a, like a poetic standpoint. But uh, recently, I was so fortunate to receive um, the opportunity to do a 90-minute keynote in uh, Minneapolis, where I spent eight years of my life. Um, for this uh, Canadian agricultural uh, and steel conglomerate. And I show up and this great friend of mine, his name is Han Su Kim, um, shows me this video by a gentleman named uh, Sifu Adam Meisner. And this guy, this Adam Meisner cat, is at the top echelons of um, Tai Chi. He's very, 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 very good at it. And there's this exercise called push hands in Tai Chi where you're basically just trying to hold your own balance while someone tries to, you know, throw you off and this, this whole thing. Anyway, he's teaching this principle of Wu Wei and he says, I don't think the translation is right. Uh, Wu Wei typically is translated as non-action, which kind of elicits someone sitting under a tree their whole life and just not engaging. He's like, that's not it. If someone's going to punch you in the face, you have to engage with them. You have to block. You have to get out of the way. Like You have to engage with life. So that's not the principle. He says, that Wu Wei is more accurately translated as non-preference. And what he means by that is if you're stuck as an entrepreneur in uh, the martial arts equivalent of like blocking up, I'm trying to block up, like that's what I want to do, then your opponent or life or struggles or challenges um, will exploit that stiffness of what, because you desperately want this thing that you think is the right move. But it's not about that. It's about not having a preference. And the NBA Finals is going on right now, and there was this beautiful shot chart of LeBron James and where he takes shot on the court. Rachel, guess where he takes shots more often than not? Um, my fiancé is going to be mad at me for not knowing this because he makes me watch all those games, but where? <laughs> Nowhere. Oh. That's the key. Okay. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Three point, not a problem. He'll take that shot close to the rim. He'll take that shot left, right, up, down. He has no preference. And so what happens is when the defender tries to be like, oh, like he's going to go to the rim, he'll just shoot the three. And they're like, oh, he's going to shoot the three. He'll just go to the rim. And if they're like, he's going to go left, he'll just go right. And so as an entrepreneur, what you'll find is there is a skill in business, um, just call it business skill, in which you can achieve mastery and the mastery is is not having any rigidity when it comes to what you think is the right idea so you may be going oh i'm going to open a pet store and we're going to do this this this, and that and then life happens and before you know it that that idea could sink you could bankrupt you it could be a terrible idea long term and meanwhile all the right answers and all the right moves have been in front of you this entire time but you're too stuck on this idea that, no, I was going to do this one thing. And so your ability to acquiesce, to be cognizant of what's happening around you, allows you to achieve mastery in business, but only if you can let go of your attachment to the vision, to be flexible um, and understand that the true goal of humanity in general uh, is inner peace. And so if you're clinging too much to an idea, uh, remember Wu Wei um, translated as non-preference. 
I absolutely love that. And again, I can relate to my own personal experience because you mentioned the dog boutique. That was going to be my first business. I planned on opening a bricks and mortar one, decided to start online, and that completely segued into something that's such a better fit. But I, you know how you said, it's sometimes we can be so rigid and we're not seeing the success that we want, but it's, it's not because we're not cut out to be an entrepreneur. We don't have good ideas. It's because we're so stuck on the one idea. We're not allowing life to lead us in a better direction, essentially. Love that. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's, and so it's hard. It's hard because you have to balance that with just giving up all the time. Right. And saying, well, yeah. I don't have preference. So you just quit. <laughs> but again, you have to engage. You have to like the punches are going to continue to be thrown at you. You have to continually engage. It's not about just stopping and you have to have goals. Um, that's that's the tricky part is you want to have the successful business. You want to have thirty five thousand dollars a month in revenue and employees all around the nation and all these things. And that's fine. Um, but. It, at what cost is this constant cost assessment? Um, I will say this to the folks listening out there. Um, one of the key pieces of puzzle that changed the game for me is writing a book. And uh, self-publishing has never, ever, 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 ever been easier. Um, there's a website called Create Space, which is an Amazon company, um, where it literally walks you through the steps. And so if you can follow instructions, you can write a book and a six by nine book, which is like a standard size of a book, is so much smaller than a standard Word doc page. And so I didn't realize this, but if you can write 50 pages in a Word doc single spaced, you have a hundred page book. And so it's not as long as it seems because the book is smaller. And then the cover, um, there's something called ISB, I want to think it's called. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, what else is it? Uh, getting it formatted for Kindle and um, Nook and even an audiobook and all these things that you have to do to get a book out um, can all be done on Fiverr.com. Um, there are a ton of people that just do book design or just do book formatting. And the cost to put a book out is probably like $400. And to order a copy of your own book, at least from my experience, is $3.11. Yeah. There is no better marketing on planet earth than sitting across from somebody that you want to become a client and saying, I'm going to sign this copy of my book for you. Here you go. and giving it to them. Yes, that's so true. Uh, the whole process, I've talked to so many people who say, oh, I always want to write a book. And like you're saying, it's so easy. And the create space, which you mentioned is Amazon's print on demand. So mm -hmm. you just upload everything to them and somebody orders the print version of your book and Amazon takes care of printing it out and shipping it to them. It's, it's very simple. So, yes. Yeah. Super effective. And it puts you in a different category as a published author, as opposed to, you know, whatever. And, uh, having a book, um, will flesh out a ton of ideas that you may have, um, about certain things so that you can do what Rachel and I are doing right now, which is hopping on shows and or public speaking and have really thought about a wide breadth of topics in order to, you know, have content. Absolutely. Well, since you just talked about it, would you mind talking with us a little more about your book and some of the key points that your book covers? Sure. So uh, the best compliment I received about the book was someone I've never met in Hawaii who said that she was on chapter five and she never thought a book about SEO would bring her to tears. Hashtag tears are real. <laughs> That's awesome. So um, this isn't a manual on here is the title tag and what you do with title tags. I, I just I couldn't be further away from what this book is about. This book is about recognizing uh, the soul of an individual, what makes you tick um, and leveraging that to advertise. Um, and the Latin, uh, of the word advertise is advertere, and it simply means to turn toward. So anything we do in life, anything at all that gets someone's attention is an ad. And so the book opens with, uh, and you can tell what phase of life I was in when I tell the story, uh, a baby crying. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> the first thing we do in life is advertise and it comes 
um, in that form of crying as a child. And every single one of our needs are met by that one ad, um, whether it's a diaper or they need to be fed or just want attention or whatever it is, all you have to do is cry. That's it. And so most entrepreneurs, when they first start a company, uh, find themselves like an infant. They just have to cry, just make as much noise as possible. Um, and, and it gets all your needs met. But what happens is, you know, now you're two, three, four years old. If you just bawl and cry, people roll their eyes and ignore you. And so as the company evolves, it has to uh, earn the appropriate language. You know, it has to learn how to advertise. It has to learn how to reach out to folks and, and get attention in the right ways. And so um, the book is an exploration of advertising as an innate human quality. Okay. I would love to actually pick your brain a little bit more about specific types of advertising since you just mentioned it. Um, mm -hmm. So I know that you started off blogging and I know that content creation is important, but is blogging still important for new businesses and established businesses? Yes. Okay. Um, so blogging is typically seen as just text on a page. Um, a good blog should include text, a number of images, and maybe a video as well. Um, every time we add a blog to a website, it increases the number of indexed pages of that site. And this is an underestimated factor uh, when it comes to rankings. And so let's take an example of two sites. Site A, personal injury attorney, has what you'd expect, an about us page, a contact us page, whatever. Um, it, let's say it's got 20 pages total. Does not blog. That's exhibit A. Exhibit B is a personal injury attorney who's been blogging for five years and they're doing four blogs a month. The size difference of those two websites is uh, considerable. Exhibit A has 20 pages. Exhibit B has like 350 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so when Google looks at the overall size of a website, that's a big factor. Not to mention, Exhibit B is going to have um, rankings for a vast swath of questions. And so the number of people visiting the site um, because they clicked on a link that ranks organically is much higher. And then we get into how artificial intelligence plays into SEO in 2018. So in 2015, Google rolled out something called RankBrain, which was their foray into AI for the first time um, from, from a global perspective. like all of Google. And as it stands today, if you take a picture, Rachel, of you standing in front of some famous place in Charlotte, um, Google can recognize your location and definitely knows what's in the picture. Wow. Um, a good example of this is, um, I did this keynote that I mentioned earlier, and I took a picture of an auger and I don't expect anyone to know what an auger is because I didn't know what an auger is. It's the machine that takes the grain from the storage bin to the truck, like a conveyor. Um, I put this into Google's um, AI image recognition technology. And the first result was machine. And then it said agriculture. And the third was auger. Wow. I put a picture of a Cessna 182 plane for another speech I did. And it said Cessna 182. And so when we're blogging, as we add pictures, we need to understand that Google sees them. It says, okay, it's a kitten or whatever it happens to be. More specifically, it's a Siamese, whatever, you know, whatever breed it happens to be. So all of that plays in. And if we use the same image over and over and over again, well, rather, let me rephrase that. If we take an image from Shutterstock or any of these companies that just vastly just proliferates a ton of images, Google also knows that this is not unique. It's been used 42,612 times. So if we take unique photos, not only are they understood, but they're, they're also um, more highly valued because of their uniqueness. And then we've got video. And so if we take any MP4, any video file, and upload it to YouTube, what we find three to four minutes after it's uploaded is that if you click the closed captions button, auto-generated um, subtitles magically appear 
once the video has been uploaded in English. So if we were to upload this podcast, every single word we speak here um, is understood with like 98, 99% accuracy. Um, when I do videos, I say send it rising, which is the name of my company. Mm -hmm. And YouTube thinks I'm saying tenderizing. <laughs> so it's not perfect, Rachel. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. And what that tells us is that in this conversation that you and I are having with, you know, 30, 45 minutes, how many words are being spoken here? Thousands. Mm -hmm. And upload that to YouTube and all of a sudden we have a thousand word piece of content embed that video onto a blog post. I don't care if the blog has like 30 written words, you embed this video and now it's 1,030 or 20,030, whatever um, number of words it happens to be. Wow. That is incredible. I did not know a lot of that. And I, I'm certain the listeners don't as well. That was, wow. It's, it's cool, but it's kind of like, <laughs> a little big brother-ish. <laughs> <laughs> a little 1984 George Orwell dystopian <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, a little bit. But <laughs> in terms of really, you know, helping with the SEO, and that's awesome. So even, now you mentioned a couple of things I do want to touch on, because you uh, mentioned the attorney. And I think that a lot of businesses that are just local businesses do not see an importance of blogging. They think it's something that's just for internet-based businesses. So would you say that if you have a local business, it is also important to do this content creation with videos and blogs? Yeah, my, so Send It Rising, as it stands today in its current iteration, is basically a blog factory. Mm -hmm. So we create approximately 200 pieces of content per month. Um, we add images to that content and we share the blogs and then subsequently on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, and LinkedIn, mm -hmm. and sometimes Pinterest. Um, and so it is incredibly important. Um, there may be a fundamental paradigm shift coming up with what we're seeing um, with Google Duplex and Alexa um, that may shift away from the current situation, uh, which is working. Like I, I see rankings improve all the time, every day. Plumbers, electricians, doctors, lawyers, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so yes, as it stands in 2018, the big key takeaway for um, entrepreneurs is that yes you have to be blogging but you really also need to get aggressive on the video piece and the videos should include should include words you should be speaking um, make sure to also include a link in the description of every YouTube video that you make that includes the HTTP colon forward slash forward slash if you don't include that it doesn't hyperlink that's very important mm -hmm. and then um, there are annotations in videos uh, that you can add as well. Those are the little click to subscribe, but there's also a link annotation that you should also include because if someone else embeds your video or shares your video, you want to earn a link back from the website that they embedded it on. Very helpful. And I know that YouTube used to have to prescribe or uh, have a transcription. Words got jumbled. You would have to provide a transcription. You don't, do you not need to do that anymore or is it just if you want it to be accurately transcribed instead of um, having a YouTube say that you're tenderizing? <laughs> right. Uh -huh. um, so auto-generated captions are pretty good. Mm -hmm. There won't be any capital letters or punctuation. It'll just be word for word what you're saying. Um, you can click on that. You can clean it up. You don't have to. It's just really not the end of the world. If you want to say, take your YouTube video and upload it to Facebook um, with the captions already on there, then you want to go into YouTube, click the closed captions, click edit, go in and edit. It's called a .srt file, which is the closed captions file, subtitle file. Um, and then there's a website called downsub.com that you can go to, punch in the YouTube URL, and it will give you the .srt file. When you go to Facebook, you upload the MP4, uh, the, which you can also download from YouTube, and then there's a place where you can include the .srt file, and then when people see your Facebook video that was on YouTube, it will also include the captions. Um, a lot of folks prefer that because as we uh, scroll through Facebook, 
we don't necessarily have our audio on or we're someplace where we can't listen to it. So if you have the subtitles, it improves performance. Very helpful. I know for myself, I never watch the videos with the sound on anymore on Facebook, on YouTube, I would, but on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And if it, yep. yeah, they don't have the subtitles then just scroll to the next. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, Facebook, oh man, talk about Facebook for days, but um, yes, in, in uh, basically, yeah, subtitles are very helpful. Well, you mentioned Facebook and I do want to get your input on different platforms. I know that for seasoned entrepreneurs and especially new entrepreneurs, we don't know where we should focus. We don't know where we should put our money for the paid ones or if we should just do all organic, um, try and do an organic reach and organic advertising on these platforms. So can you give a little insight into where you think a new entrepreneur should start off in terms of social media with Pinterest and Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and all of that. Right. So the absolute best answer I can give would be the email info mm -hmm. at senditrising.com. That's I-N-F-O at S-E-N-D-I-T-R-I-S-I-N-G.com because I don't know what your business is. Mm -hmm. um, if you are an esthetician, then Instagram and Pinterest all day, every day. Facebook Live, makeup videos all day, every day. If you're a plumber, you need to be blogging and making YouTube videos about how to fix XYZ problem. This is a common problem. So it's going to vary based on your industry. Um, but some of the secret sauce includes link building through Pinterest. So there's something called Google Search Console, which is the most data Google gives us um, about how their artificial intelligence is judging our websites. And let me tell you, if you can get a site to rank well in Google, um, it can have prof ludicrous profound effects on the profitability of the business. I think we, most of us understand this. Um, and so one of the ways Pinterest can be leveraged to get the rankings you want in Google uh, works like this. You take a blog post, you include call five images. Each image is standalone, meaning, you know, it can just be put on Pinterest and be funny or interesting or shareable or whatever. You pin the image that is from the blog post onto Pinterest, and any time that image gets repinned, it will create another backlink back to the site because the image itself is backlinked to the blog. So the takeaway here is that when I say link, I'm not just referring to like a blue hyperlink that we're all used to. I'm also including images that when you click them, take you back to the website. That's also a backlink. And the reason I mentioned Google Search Console is because there is a section um, that says links to the site that you're able to see if you install this and you definitely should on your website, it's free, this and Google Analytics. Um, then Pinterest, typically for our clients, uh, will have like, 14,612 links, and the next closest will be YouTube with 42, and then, you know, whatever XYZ website with 20. Um, so Pinterest, uh, the way to do this is to put up, call it like 20, 30 pins on your page, and then follow about 500 to 1,000 people that are interested in whatever it is that you're doing, dogs or beauty or whatever, um, and then start to um, drop a lot of pins. If you get invited to groups on Pinterest, definitely join them and definitely pin your stuff there as well. That's very helpful. I know when I had uh, my online dog boutique, Pinterest was excellent for me, mm -hmm. um, driving tra traffic. And I had no idea that you could do that with the pictures. Um, so I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to start doing that today. <laughs> oh, dogs is perfect. We, we had a website called whateveridogdeserves.com, mm -hmm. 100,000 backlinks from Pinterest. Wow. <laughs> Wow. So yeah, I would definitely say anybody who has anything where people Pinterest a lot, they could find a lot of success following that strategy, correct? That's right. And you know, even if you're like a personal injury attorney, I keep coming back to the example or a plumber, you mm -hmm. can you can go down that path. Um, it can be somewhat effective. Um, but dogs, cats, babies, charities, um, they do really well on Pinterest. Awesome. You mentioned charities. And so I want to talk a little bit more about what you call cause marketing. And can, can you go into that for our listeners? I sure can. So I'll give you the long version. So I'm standing 
in a classroom in North Dakota uh, about seven years ago, and it's uh, frigidly cold. And despite the freezing temperatures, rays of light are coming in from the foggy glass, and they hit something in the back of the room that earns my attention. I walk over, and it's this beautiful little piece of art um, in a silver frame. And behind the glass is this piece of parchment that reads, I am still learning. Um, this moment is beautiful um, in and of itself, but made all the more so because I just attended my mom's funeral. And this was the last classroom that she had taught in. So I take this piece of art, and it's been with me for like six, seven years. Mm. I get an email from a gentleman, his name's Don Jersey, and he's this high up in this company called Greenspun Media Group, which is this massive journalistic enterprise here in Clark County in Las Vegas, Nevada. And he's changed his email address from um, Don at Greenspun Media Group to Don at recoveryhighschool.com. And I'm like, huh, what the heck? What's Don up to? Um, reach out to him. Turns out he was at Greenspun Media Group and this uh, – like news alert came across his desk. Um, it was uh, a story of a, a prostitute who was involved with an altercation with a pimp and shots were fired. And as he read on, he found out that it, it was his daughter. Oh, wow. And so she was um, addicted to heroin and this all, he had no idea. So he, uh, like most heroes, um, doesn't allow this to spiral him into the depths of depression. He fights back and uses his um, like government ties and folks he knows um, to create, help create the first ever completely publicly funded drug addiction recovery high school in the United States. It's like the only one. Wow. And it's right here in Las Vegas. And so I'm like, Don, I'm crying. He's crying. Mm. Run this phone call together. And uh, I'm like, look, give me a tour, man. Let's do this. So I end up at Mission High School. He's giving me the tour. He introduces me to someone, um, the principal of the institution, Mission High School. Her name is Principal Barbara Collin. And I'm getting the tour and we're doing the thing. And I just am picking up on this vibe of love and respect in this institution, which, uh, do you know what the opposite of uh, love is, Rachel? Fear is what I would high say. School. Oh, <laughs> That's true. That's perfect. So I do this whole, you know, like tour of the, of the place. And um, I say to Principal Collins at the end of it, hey, can I do some interviews with you and the kids and the students and stuff? She says, yeah, great. So I grab my camera gear and, and I do about five interviews. Um, each story just devastating, like the one I told you earlier. They're, they're all as devastating as that story. And it culminates with Principal Collins bawling on camera talking about how proud she is of these students. And I'm like, oh my goodness, look at this. So I go through all the Clark County School District rigmarole on, on being able to use the videos and, and all this stuff. And I post it on senditrising.com because my business has a soul, because I am perfectly fine with putting together something that I believe in and having that be just standalone what it is. There is no like, hey, we're an internet marketing company. Hey, buy our stuff. Hey, social media. Hey, website development. None of it. Just look at these amazing kids. That's it. Um, and our logo at the end. That's, a, that's the only way you'd even know it's a Cinder Rising production. So that's cause marketing. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about having a purpose in life, following um, you know, that, that pull in your heart um, and doing something about it. As it turns out, it was the best performing social media posts by far that we've ever created, not shockingly uh, at all. And then I return to give a speech and debut that video to the whole school. And uh, I give Barbara Collins that piece of art that I told you about at the beginning of the story in front of everyone on camera. Um, and so for those listening right now, uh, the mystery that is life um, and your business are intrinsically connected there there is no separation between them so any spirituality any um you know just absolute awe that you feel from time to time just existing on this planet and your business as far as i'm concerned are the same thing that's absolutely beautiful and you know i think that 
business owners and especially like marketers and advertisers, people in like the marketing or advertising field almost get an unfair stereotype that they're only about pushing a product or a service. They're only about numbers. And I love that you just followed something that was so true to your soul and you didn't use it to try and make yourself look good and market your business. You did it because you felt called or guided to do so. And people, your, your customers, people out there, they, they can tell. They know when something is genuine. I think that's just absolutely beautiful. And I love how you combine the two. There doesn't have to be a separation between, like you said, like the spiritual piece and your business or what you feel guided to do, your inspiration, your business. You can find a way to combine those. That's, I love that so much. So, so do it. I mean, if you're out there and you find yourself pulled in a certain direction, this is the Wu way that I was talking about earlier. It's, you know what, grab the camera, make the video, create the thing. Um, because having that ability, and it's so funny how this stuff becomes incredibly valuable, but only because you really loved it. So I'm in front of like a hundred Canadians like three weeks ago, you know, and I'm telling them the story about, you know, just it's exactly the story I just told you. Um, and uh, it was for this keynote thing. And it was a big deal in my life. And I just got the check for it today. It was amazing. So happy. Um, so it, it's, it's a paradox because you have to do it because you want to, but then further down the line, what you find is that people genuinely appreciate what you're doing, want you to do more of it. And because we just invent money, our culture is, uh, how do you put it, motivated, interested in giving more resources to people that give. Givers gain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so important to hear. And I know that whenever we're first starting businesses, we can maybe be reluctant to want to give or maybe be reluctant to show our true selves. But like you were saying, people respond to that. I mean, just when you were telling that story, I could feel the, the passion behind that. I can feel that was such a genuine and powerful experience for you. And that came through just, I mean, I can't even see you. I'm not looking at a video. I could just hear it in your voice. And I'm sure the listeners can as well. So definitely. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so how, you know, how, what can they do? That, that's, that's the question to meditate on. Mm -hmm. um, the rest, the rest are just tools, you know, so like the Pinterest, the YouTube, the Facebook, like they're just hammers and saws and nails and siding for the house that you're building. And that's it. Um, there's nothing like, how do you put it? Um, there's no art in the instrument. You know what I mean? Like we, like we bring that. Um, so don't be intimidated by the development of the website, you know, like build your own WordPress website, please. I'm begging you. You can do it. You know, like if you haven't already, you can do that. Set up your own social media. Don't be beholden to someone else to always do this. One of the biggest barriers of entry for most um, entrepreneur, entrepreneurs and visionaries is that they go, oh, I've got this great idea, but, oh, I couldn't build a website. I couldn't, you know, I don't want to, oh, I don't want to do the social media. That's, that's not for me. And you have to understand that I make my living from people making those decisions, <laughs> right? <laughs> I, that's how I make, that's how I pay the bills and like put food on my kids, you know, table, like is from folks saying, you know, I don't want to do this. Um, and at a certain point, I understand that you should delegate that responsibility to companies like mine, but ignorance makes you um, so weak. And I feel so bad. So, like, so many folks out there will just take a check, right? They'll say, mm -hmm. oh, you want SEO and you have $600 a month? Okay. And they'll do it and it won't work. And they'll go, okay, well, we did the work. So what are you complaining about? Um, it's, it's nuanced. Um, marketing is at least, I shouldn't say at least, I would say marketing is half of a business. It's half of it. And so um, take the time to educate yourself so that you can speak with folks from a position of having done it, even if you failed miserably. So um, fail often, build a website if you haven't already, run uh, a side project if you haven't already, check out Create Space, film videos, and don't let fear stop you. Perfect advice. I typically ask uh, our guests if they have any last piece of advice for our listeners, but I think you just shared it unless you can think of anything else. 
Um, I used to think that motivational um, folks in the motivational speaking space, I was like, oh, just like a million eye rolls per second. <laughs> um, but what, as I get a little bit older, I realized that whatever we're currently listening to now has this um, subtle influence over the way we think and behave over the next couple of days. And so because I have your attention now, just know that your, um, like your worth as a human being um, is not at all tied to the vision and what you do for a living. Like, like just you alone existing on planet Earth is more than enough. And so anything you do from an entrepreneurial perspective is just uh, icing. It's just extra. And the, the fear of it crashing and burning um, is something to think about and become okay with. Um, I have failed way many more times than I've succeeded. I actually have a crypto mining company right now. Uh, Wells Fargo just shut down our bank account and we are 100% legitimate, do our taxes, like everything's on the up and up and they just don't want to have anything to do with crypto mining. And mm -hmm. so on, on the face of it, I run this successful internet marketing company, which is true, but I am in the midst of another potentially failing company. Um, and so constantly be looking for opportunities uh, that could crash and burn, uh, but push through it. You can do it, I believe in you. Perfect, perfect advice. So true. You have to be willing to fail and every failure comes tons of lessons and that's what you take with you. Thank you so very much. I mean, you, we've really covered a lot, a lot more than, than I expected to, to be honest with you. So I'm so grateful that you came on this show. Can you tell the guests where they can find you? Yes. So you can shoot us an email, uh, info at senditrising.com. That's I-N-F-O at S-E-N-D-I-T-R-I-S-I-N-G. If you have a very good memory and or a pen, my name is Kellen Kautzman, and I have a website, kellenkautzman.com. That's K-E-L-L-E-N-K-A-U-T-Z as in zebra, M-A-N.com. And if you want to give us a ring at 702-263-0141. Again, 702-263-0141. Thank you so much, Kellen. I am going to put the links in the notes so you can check those out. And thank you so much for listening to the 9 to 5 Dropout Show. I hope that you have a wonderful week and I will talk with you next time. Thank you for tuning in to the 9 to 5 Dropout Show. Be sure to check out the links below to enroll in the 9 to 5 Dropout Academy and receive your free gift and mini course. Let us know what you thought of this week's episode by rating or leaving a review.